Hi, this is Gary Freeman on Big League Video. And if you think these blokes look angry now, just wait to see how they'll react if they discover that you've copied this video. Unless you want some angry Kiwis knocking at your door, take my advice and don't copy the tape. The Big League Video Test Match Special is proudly brought to you by Carlton and United Breweries, Norwich Insurance and the Commonwealth Bank. Well, Ciro, you're over at my place. Um, you've been for a swim. Put the big bucks in there, give them the cool down. I mean, <laughs> what are you actually doing here? You know, and why have you got that football? Well, listen, mate, I, uh, I actually found this footy at Palmerston North yeah. and thought I'd better return it. Apparently, there was a, a fair few people looking for it. There was, actually. And did you stick up your jumper or, or what? Actually, what, what I... Did you uh, do? How did you get away? How did you get out of that? The I, ground with I served it this, this ball and four others. And, and they, they were all, in your buttocks. They were all down the back of the shorts. <laughs> That's where they were. You thought I was. No one would have noticed. Big backside. That's yeah, true. Yeah. I wonder That's why I couldn't tackle you from man. behind. <laughs> <laughs> So, where's that? Our are pretty good people. <laughs> Mate, I'm afraid I've got no idea what you're talking about. Mate, don't play dumb with me. You know perfectly well that we let you guys back in and for a draw in the first test for the good of the game and to set up a good test series. Ciro, I'm thinking you're taking too many knocks to the head because you know our mob outplayed you. Mate, you'd have to say that the better side drew in the first test. Well, I'll agree with you there. Sit back and enjoy the opening bout of the 1993 Trans-Tasman Cup. Willie Kahn to bring this one back for Australia. Freeman. Rapati. Brings in Nikau standing nice and wide. Back for Watson. Great stepping. He's got support. There should be a penalty. They still play the advantage. Now that's a good advantage played by Russell Smith. A penalty to New Zealand to call up Darrell Halligan. A little bit of a breeze here to assist to bring it around from the right. Halligan, you never can deny this man. Australia instead take on the right hand side of the defensive line, breaking left and bringing it back. Not back, Michael Hancock continues on. 10 metres out. Langer. Looks wide. Lang! A big hole up the middle. Dale Shearer. Did he get it down the opening try? Right next to the post, New Zealand just opened up. And Alan Langer lost his way through to set it up for Dale Shearer. Langer goes to Daly. Daly shapes for one point. He is happy just to grab the extra one. That is enough. Freeman cutting men out similarly to the way the Australians have been doing it as he brings in McCracken. Again Freeman behind the line. Yeah, it looked like a good plan move to me. They're not taking on Australia up the middle. They've got Mercer and Nicole running very wide. They move it two-thirds. Freeman comes across, as you see many times, at Eastern Suburbs. Great work from New Zealand. Good. 
Good pressure football, but now they've got to back it up with good defence. Kiwi forwards have got to get in there and really hammer Australia because the Australian forwards, in my opinion, are having the better of it. That is what's required. Langer, chopping and changing, goes back to Shearer. Shearer floats it! Yeah, I think it's really put Australia under the under the, the knuckle here. Sean Hobby's come up with two tries in about seven or eight minutes, and uh, what a great way to start your New Zealand career. Langer, Kevin Walters, Bradley Clyde, back to Brad Fiddler. Fiddler to Kevin Walters, has plenty of support to now Shearer. Shearer with a step. The last 40 seconds in New Zealand stretched they're on the rack as australia dig deep to find a try harrigan right in front of the post hands and knees he is taking them to two meters out steve wallace from dummy half steals a try with 20 seconds left on the clock shearer to leave it but only one point in it freeman again Rapati stepping, taken well by Sheridan, but he gets the ball away to Watson. To Freeman! Freeman taken by Shearer, both sides. Stretched to the limit in attack and defence. Watson. Watson inside for Drayman! Did he get it down? No! He tried to reach out. Let's take another look, John. Did he get it down on the line with pressure? Yes! Langer looking wide to Kevin Walters. Daly will only have Willie Khan outside him and a mile of black and white jumpers in front. 19 minutes left for the world champs to find at least two points. That was a dangerous sign then for Australia because it was only one play. What a hit. What a hit from the Kraken on the giant, Glenn Lazarus. Now they put it down and they turn defence into attack. Fiddler nearly stole it. Just like Hoppy, Fiddler was nearly gone. tries to put an impact on it. Fiddler gets rid of two stands, can't get it back. Langer's there if they want I'll one. take the field goal and cut the losses here. It's Daly! Daly grabs it! Locked together, unbelievable stuff. They keep their cool. Fiddler goes deep to Edwards. He will have only 10 seconds. Last throw of the dice. Who can stand up and produce? Last tackle of what has been an exciting test. There could be a penalty. The crowd has absolutely rushed onto this ground. 14 all. There are all sorts of claims being made about light beers these days. So what's so special about Foster's special? Yeah, I think it was one of my uh, best series I've played against Australia. I've, um, you know, the first test was, was good, it was an open game. The second test was a little bit muddy, but we still managed, I managed to score a try against them, so that's something that I've never done before, and that was a great feeling. But it, it was a tremendous series in, the, in, the, in character building, I think, for our whole side. And for personal note, I thought the three games that I played in, I thought I played all right. And uh, to play against guys like Big Ciro and uh, and Roberts, when he did come on, you know, it was great, and against Langer, and uh, just to play well was just a big bonus, really. Pulling on the jersey is uh, probably one of the greatest thrills of my life. I think that uh, you know it's the best thing that can happen. The adrenaline's running all the time through the uh, the training, but when you actually put the jersey on with only an hour to go of the game, I think it's the best height that uh, anyone could have in, in this game. Lose is not one of my best points of the, of the game, but uh, I think just competing uh, with uh, the players that are over here and hopefully being regarded as a good footballer in Australia, and it uh, means a lot to any Kiwi that plays here. And uh, just to stay in your number one position, I think that's the reason why I compete so fiercely. My international career with uh, New Zealand started back in 1986, and you know every game that I've played in has been enjoyable and. Uh, with some great victories and some sad losses and that, but uh, there's something I can look back on and say, well, I was a part of that side that uh, did take on those other teams. And, uh, you know, there's only a few players that actually get that chance to play for their country, and uh, at least I can say I've done something that I wanted to achieve since I was a young boy. Hello, I'm Scott Gould.
Jule, I play for St George, and let's go and have a look at some Commonwealth Bank Cup action. The player of the series, and haven't there been some notable ones, Alexander and Sterling, and the list goes on and on. He'll receive $1,000 worth of Deodora equipment, leisure wear, and playing wear. Those great people at Deodora, we thank them in this year's Commonwealth Bank Cup. And here's a good run now for Terrigal Hines, the 5'8". He goes in and away, it's Briggs to over 40, unloads a beautiful ball, put away the glasses, get in the queue. This is Smith, he's tearing right away, and a great try. Gibbs gets up and plays it on the halfway line. They move it through their half, and now for their centre three-quarter, he split them. This is the four, Wetherill. He gets a nice ball away to his centre partner, Grant. Inside ball, look forward. Referee says, play on, Huddle score! Troy Dikonoski, a schoolboy superstar from a couple of years ago. I'll come back to this because Terry Goli, they're making more yards. This is a devastating run from Smith. He's away over 30. He's over the 20 and 10. Troy time, Terry Bob March, the coach for Henry Kendall. What would be the instructions coming from you? What have they got to do? But here's another chance for Terrigal High. We'll come back here shortly. This could well be three tries. He's already scored two. He goes over the 20 of the 10. Oh, put away the glasses. Briggs is wrapped up. Looking for it. He split them over the 40. He's got a player inside. That's play on. Quentin Smith. Get in the queue again. I tell you what, that's good football. Make sure you throw the ball out in front of the player so that it comes back into his chest. And the easiest way to do that is to keep the short, the passes nice and short and sharp. 9-6 there. Oh, straight back. through, Hannah. Hannah, he crosses the 20. He's got the uprights in front of him. Birthdays have all come at once. It bounced ball for the winner. So this is O'Halloran. Getting a nice ball around the corner. Sends the second rower, Johnson, rather sharp, away over the 30. He makes it to the 20, turns it inside for Jewis. Jewis finds no trouble. Cash and Shortland shows it inside, splits them over 40. He goes over 30. He's got support inside and out. Will he use them? He certainly does. Beautiful play. Clark, Clark busts them, still going, gets a magic ball away, Dwyer, they're giving chase, but this horse has bolted, coming around to improve the position, try number three, Musselbrook high, pressing Foster's line once more, Boney, beautiful ball, the good one, steps on the left, jinx under the post, centre of Illawarra Stadium, with the football, the cat, the magic ball, see that was a nice ball, Clifton, They've got it against the head. That's confidence play. Goodwin's got numbers wide. He reads it beautifully. Hampson fends off one like a fly. Try. Sinclair again from dummy half. Across that back line. Moving it nicely. Nick Whitting oh. sends it out wide. It's going to be a try. From the play of the ball. They're lined out nicely, Wavell. Let's see what they can do with it. Keeper all offside. Keeping it going right across field now. And on this time to the winger in uh, Hodgins coming through. Hodgins going for the corner, and Hodgins is going to touch down for the try. I come off the worst end a couple of times. <laughs> Cutting through as Wally, still going as Wally. He's coming up to the 20 metre arc. Minskip comes at him, but he gets his pass away to Barlow, and Barlow will run around and wave her in. Barlow over for the try. Well, apart from the football, mate, I've got another little present for you. I love surprises. What is it, mate? It's a check from the Bowman Football Club. Barnsley? Exactly. It doesn't, it doesn't give away too often, but at the check for that try you gave away when East played Balmain, you, you probably still thought you played for the Tigers. Oh, yeah, thanks, mate. Yeah, sure I was, yeah. I, I'll appreciate the check from Barnsley because that's about the only time he's ever given me anything. But uh, True. the score is still 2-1 to us, and uh, you may never, ever get to uh, get up to my scoreline yet. Yeah. Watch out for Balmain next year, mate. We'll get you. Almost crabbing in front of Freeman as he came across field. Still on the 20-metre line, O'Dwyer. Freeman first receiver, goes wide this time. Good pass back, I think it was Brendan Hall under Freeman. He's got his winger. In fact, it's Jeff Alford playing in the centres who finishes it off to score the try. Freeman cutting across the ruck, going to the blind side. There's a long pass, intercepted by Sinclair. Freeman chases, he knocks it away. Silver's giving chase over the halfway. Silver cutting him down. Long ball. And away goes Graham Lyons, racing for the line. The intercept try. Graham Lyons. Balmain.
been leading 12-7 and hanging on grimly to that lead. Here's Davis. Davis is through. He's got support. Davis with one in front of him. And the last pass finds Jamie Corcoran. And he will complete a fair try. He want to put the ball down. And... They attack again, the green machine. Going left side. Belcher on to Daly, linking up with Meninga. There's some talent with the ball there. And here's some more talent to burn as Nadruku steams on a Meninga's pass. Finds Ferner. This is Belcher backing up. Sends the ball back inside to Nadruku. The defence converts and they run him down about seven metres from the Gold Coast line. Laurie Daly wants a quick play of the ball. They won't let him do it, but he finally gets the ball now. The service comes right side to Ricky Stewart. On there to Belcher. Throws the dummy and goes in the score. This is Walters in the dummy half again. Daly sends it left side. Stewart holds the pass up. Draw Gill gives it to Belcher, Meninga and Nadruku. Talent to burn, finishing off another sweet Canberra backline movement. It's been all one-way traffic so far. And here comes the traffic again. It's all green lights as Nadruku feeds off Daly and sprints down the left flank. Oh, he stood up, Peacock. Brent Todd won't catch him. And this excitement machine from Fiji goes in to score again. And you can see why the fans down here love him so much. The Raiders on the attack again. They're after more points. They're not content with what they've done so far. Matthew Wood sends a lovely pass on to Meninga. Going into the corner. Peacock comes across. Takes the corner post. And the referee, Graham West, will give the try after consultation with his assistants. Ricky Stewart now holding up the ball, virtually toying with the Gold Coast defence at the moment. The Canberra Raiders has Matthew Wood, the replacement 5'8", puts a nicely way to kick through. Belcher chases, but it's Hoppy playing FA Cup style with the ball, picking it up and getting a nice bounce, shrugging up the defence and scoring to complete a magic day for the Raiders. 48 points to four. Brown from dummy half, he might have used the referee. He's under the post and it's a try. Riolo, Simon, Goldsby, Piccinelli, long pass out, Britain, he'll score! Jonathan Britton. Lions pulls him down, swept by Hill, given to Lamb, put away the glasses, Terry gets his second. The kicks from Lamb not putting a great deal of pressure on the manly defences. Cliff Lions picks up Hancock, gets outside Dallas. Gets away from Demick, beats Palamanta, Luke Goodwin to beat, gets the pass inside, this is going to be a try, Moore puts it down for Manley. Lamb, Newton out wide, got a pass away, that was a great pass, and Terry Lamb goes in for try number three. O'Donnell, Hasler, puts on the sprint, tried to beat them with strength. OJ gets the pass away. Back for Jones and now Stokes. Stokes tries to step them. Still going. Try. Did he get it down? Did he get it down? Yes, yes. it's a try for Frankie Stokes. The crowd heading for the exits. Luke Goodwin goes for the drop goal. He puts his hand in the air. So does the referee. 21 points to 12. He's nine metres out. Dummy half is Andrews. Now was Field. On for Brown. Inside for Thompson. They won't stop Thompson. Thompson puts it down. And Craig Field is injured. That's a real danger sign for South Sydney. Mark Carroll goes for a drop goal. The front row is gone for the one point. And, and he's I'll got tell it. you what, he's got it. That's a miracle kick by Mark Carroll. Look at the smile on his face. Chris King it was. No, it was. It was Horro. Now it's out for Thompson. Round the corner for Hermanson. That's a try. That's the ball game. 17 minutes of play gone. Cartwright holds it up and gives it to Girdler. Girdler goes towards Leeds, turns it on the angle, and Tony Shurum scores the try. Us tackle now. Alton swings it wide. Langmack, he's got George Alice outside. He goes inside to Leeds. Leeds loops a pass over there. L was on hand at Shark Park on Saturday night to reward E.T. for his 200 games with Cronulla. Raper looks to the blind side and finds big Danny Lee crashing forward, making good yardage in these heavy conditions. It's Raper again, always on the ball, and he puts the grubber through down into the Newcastle corner where Robbie O'Davis slips, comes up with a fumble, and Paul Bell's there. Graham Annesley's going to check with his in-goal judge. He likes it. Goes right side, they continue the wrap. On there to Quinn. 
They hold the ball up. This is Bell giving it on there to Diamond. He can't be put to ground. And this is Bell backing up. Takes a great pass from Diamond. Where Rodwell switches the point of attack. They go right now. Hagen sends a bad pass on there to Kemp. He's tried to shoot it out the back door. But it's a fumble for Newcastle. And coming up with the ball is a replacement, Evans. Hagen is giving chase now. But, oh, Evans has pushed him off with a great deal of ease. 20 metres to go. There aren't any defenders who are going to catch him. And Evans is going to score a final try for the Sharks. Could that be the turning point? Evans raises his arm and says, I'm going to sleep, boys. Danger area has been exploited on a couple of occasions by Brisbane. The two long cutout passes as Brisbane caught on the first of the gets a great pass away. Caruana, Hall goes inside, gets the pass away. The bounce forward, it's a try. The bounce forward does not make it a forward pass. Caruana. Billy Moore, short ball for Fairley. Now for Fennec, now David Hall. Oh, he'll score. Very fast, David Hall. Langer, Walters, a bad pass. Picked up on the bounce by Meyer. He should score, he will score. Caruana, Larson, David Fairley, bumps away from Hone. He'll score, will he? No. I tell you what, even though it was a forward pass, I made the comment earlier, and I'd like a comment from you, Caruana by Joby, a versatile. Here's Walters. Walters crosses the halfway. Brisbane come back. O'Neill, way down the ground, they won't catch him. O'Neill puts it down. Oh, fair dinkum, it's become a touch football game. Oh, about this defence. Over the halfway. A long, incisive run. Ending 10 metres from the line. Game and they should score from this rap if they can get a quick play of the ball. Solomon Wilson. Billy Moore's pass scooped up by Greg Florimo. It was actually touched by a Christmas player. It should have been six again. They mightn't need it. David Lydiard, Glenn Lydiard. Now Tony Ray. Oh, and Tony time. Ray gets his second try. This is his hardest kick of the day. Would you? Oh, what a golden day for the Bears. North go over to salute their fans on the harbour side. Tremendous day for them. They've beaten the Premiers. Wizza, I think it's yep. time to check out the best tries of the month. Well, mate, if you're in there, I'll swim to New Zealand and back. Well, just in case, mate, I've got the goggles oh, here. Oh, no. Gary Maroney, here I come. Exactly. <laughs> Close to half-time, through the hands of the halves, then to Devereaux, Devereaux in some space, defence coming across, draws them, alternate, alternate beats the tackle of Belcher, and eventually, and finally, Manly scores. Now they're eight metres away from the line, the Doggies. Jimmy can pay out wide. bit over exuberant there Gaia as Roberts sends it away TV on the wraparound gets it back back on the inside it comes away Kosef on it goes to Hasler Hasler over the corner line Hasler dashes away and Desi's in the kicks from Lamb not putting a great deal of pressure on the manly defences Cliff Lines picks up Hancock gets outside Dallas gets away from Demick beats Paul Luke Goodwin to beat Gets the pass inside. This is going to be a try. Moore puts it down for Manly. Canberra running right in this first half. Lomax, a one-handed pass. Beautifully picked up by Mullins. Mullins in space. He's down to the quarter line. Mullins, they're giving chase, but they won't catch this Greyhound. The galloping Greyhound's in. Some light bitters seem to lose that crisp, clean taste after a couple of glasses. So what's so special about Foster Special? One thing that never goes away in rugby league is referee controversy. Ciro? Well, I guess it won't, mate. I suppose because they'll never be immune simply because they're, uh, they're human beings, mate. Yeah, well, that raises the questions whether video should be used to help referees make those tough decisions. What do you think, pal? Well, at times come, the game's getting faster and faster, I believe, and um, if you can get some assistance elsewhere, um, with those line ball decisions, mate, I, th I think probably the time's come where they can sort of 
uh, check a monitor um, straight after an event and that could probably help the referees. Well, I think it's a little bit wrong there, Sarah, because I think the referees have put under a lot more pressure now because they've got so many other people giving them their decisions. And I think that the man in the middle should be the only guy making the decision and it should be final. Once that's done, it's the end of the story and leave it alone. And let's probably talk about what's good about the game. No, no, it just takes away from the uh, spontaneity of the game. Yeah, in very controversial circumstances, yeah, they should have a video replay. Oh, most definitely, yeah, yeah. Similar to the uh, cricket nowadays, yes. I think in uh, modern times, yeah, certainly. It's just no good for the game if uh, the rest are making too many mistakes. It's not the fair side's not winning, and um, the crowd don't appreciate it. So I think they should. Let the referees, you know, make the decision on the spot and bad luck. If it's going to improve the game, it's definitely. I think it's one of those things that we've, we've really got to have a look at. I don't. It's. it's I don't necessarily think it's uh, like standing on the diving board. I think I'm a bit like uh, standing on the edge of the swimming pool. I just want to dip the toe in and have a feel first, rather than plunge right off the diving board and uh, sort of have no comeback. In fact, that's what the leagues tended to do with things before. They've done that with two referees. They trialled it once in one game somewhere, and because uh, it was so radical, and was, like a referee would never have had another referee on the field with him before. And because uh, there were some problems with it, they threw it straight out the window. You know, you get, sometimes you get the feeling it's, that they do that type of thing almost deliberately so that they don't have to worry about it anymore. I think if we do this carefully and uh, analytically, perhaps in, a, in the, in the pre-season challenge games, I think um, we, could get, you know, we, could, we could find out whether it really works. Anything that can be conclusive in assisting the referee to make a decision uh, surely uh, must enhance uh, the problems we're having. The video shouldn't be used. They've been They've had the system for 75 years, they don't need to change. It, it takes away the human element of the game. I think the league had always had the point of view that uh, the quality of the uh, video equipment it would have to be the same at every venue. And uh, well, hopefully with the uh, amount of money that's in, in the league these days, or sponsorship uh, assistance, that can uh, be achieved. So given that the equipment levels were the same across every venue, yes, I think it should. It should be on the, on the spur of the moment what the referee sees. Whether it's right or wrong, he calls it, and it's too precise with video. I think that's part of the game, really. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 Video yep. decisions, for sure. Yep. Why? Because oh, it helps. Because, because the, ref, the ref always makes mistakes. mistakes. That's always, why. He's always yeah. making mistakes. Humans yeah. are perfect. Machinery is perfect. It's better. It's, it's not perfect, but it's better. Yeah, right. It's way better. I don't think video assistance will assist referees in any great way. Um, you know, there's always the, the opportunity there for the person who is analysing the video to make mistakes and that can be later, um, I suppose, analysed by other people and shown that they made mistakes and, and you know, that, if that ever happened, then that would be a tragedy for the game. I think the game's too fast to pause for video analysis. I really think um, that referees need a little bit more assistance, but I really think there should be a second referee on the field. Well, my ambitions would be uh, to cement a, a, a spot in first grade, you know, for, for, for now and for years to come. Um, then win a, a first grade premiership and play representative football. It's been beyond my expectations. Um, I only really sort of uh, thought I'd get a, a run here and there in first grade this year, but as it's turned out, I've, uh, you know, um, they've been shorter wingers and I've been able to fill the shoes all right. So I'd say I'd be a lot better at being a young player at Manly than what it'd be than what it would be at other um, clubs because um, firstly, you know, the coach there, he's, uh, he, he places a lot of confidence in himself as long as the other senior players like John Jones and Matthew Ridge, and Roberts you know, and the like, um, you know, they're all great and they really make it, make it fit in well. Hi, I'm Tim Horan from the Wallabies. We've got a three test series against the Springboks this year and hoping to have all your support there. All the Wallabies will be supporting the Kangaroos on their three test series against New Zealand. First touch. They will pour in inside the 20. All mistakes absolutely vital in this area tonight. Langer to dummy half. Away to Harrigan. Just how important will it be for the Australians to get over the advantage line? Langer. Langer in behind the line. Off the knees. What a pick up from Kent. Where's the support? Here comes Hobby. Come. 
Meninga calling for runners. Langer ducks. Sets a ball up to Shearer, who's staying in the line. They're down to the last. Daly to Meninga. Ledner to Clyde. Just too much pressure. Yeah, Australia just had the numbers out here. Too many players, and, and the execution was good. Caught Hoppy out of position. One bad kick, and they have put themselves under pressure. Great run from Hancock. Langer inside. Sirenen. Sirenen inches away. Steve Walters to Langer. To Daly. To Meninga. To Clyde, who grabbed the first try. Back in. Was Meninga in a field with? Doesn't matter. Willie Kahn grabs the second try. Yeah, here we see the ball coming nice and wide. I thought Willie Kahn was a little slow to come off his wing. I thought he was needed on the inside a little earlier than that. The ball was knocked down by a New Zealand player and uh, Willie Kahn in. Well, our clock appears to be quite wrong at the moment as Kent goes to the end goal. Willie Kahn just puts it dead. Clever variation. They haven't had much possession. And Willie Kahn comes up with the save of the night. Inside to McCracken, gets rid of one. McCracken gets rid of two. Gets it out for Kent. Kent inside to Freeman. What a try! Gary Freeman sends this test into a real showdown. Great work from the Kiwis here. This is what was required. McCracken changing the angle, getting a ball, good ball from Kemp. Shows his strength, shows his pace, shrugging off a couple of tacklers there. Great work again from Kemp to back up, getting himself in position, staying alive. Gary Freeman, he's the inspiration for this Kiwi side. He had to come up with something and he's done it. He's put it under the black dot. How do you like that, Mr Hughes? Australia just where they want to be. New Zealand have to go a long way. And the clock is ticking away. Lazarus, who? Well, I was going to say, would Watson be able to stop him? He was put off balance by Tudor. Daly! Daly! Beautiful ball! It's gone! What a great backline play that they do possess, the Australian team, throwing a great long pass out there to Michael Hancock, but as you say, the spectator's too close there. I can't believe that somebody in the league over here hasn't got control of balls. The players are trying to play an 80-minute game, and we have got delay after delay for the ball back into play. The kick is in from Daly. Apparently, this was also the story against Great Britain in the home series last season. Someone's got to take a hand. The players look as though they're going to have to battle to the dressing rooms. Great comeback from New Zealand. The players try and rush off the ground. And a real test at Palmerston North for the world champs again. Lang Park will be a tough run also next Wednesday night. A little bit disappointing, you know, I thought we had the game in control in the second half, but uh, we just tried to force too many balls in this sort of conditions and it uh, resulted in us coming out uh, second best. Hi, I'm Ray Hadley, inviting you to join the 2UE Continuous Call Team every Saturday and Sunday for the number one coverage of Rugby League. We take your calls, discuss the issues, and of course bring you all the action of the two big games. I'm joined by an array of stars like the Chief Rugby League writer of the Telegraph Mirror, Peter Fralingos. My co-commentator is former international John Gibbs, former Test stars Michael O'Connor, and of course Wayne Pearce are there, along with the Australian Test coach Bobby Fulton and former St George captain Michael Beattie. A star-studded cast, make sure you join us every Saturday. Saturday and Sunday between 12 and 6, right here on Radioactive 2UE. Thanks for watching the Big League video. Now let's check out what happened in round 10 of the Winfield Cup. Newcastle with a chance. Martin around the back row, Davis. Now, Rodney Howe goes for the corner. Rolling the arm around trying to get it going, but Newcastle again on a roll, and McCormack picks up Butterfield. Butterfield inside the 30. Martin will get him. Johns 
Around the back for O'Davis. He's away. O'Davis gets the try. Oh, there we go. He's picked Horro up and driven him. The ball came spewing out. And now Newcastle on the attack. Chief Harrigan, he hit him with everything. Now, Martin, Martin will go for the corner, gives the pass, and Brad Gordon gets the try. But Silva, one on one, he steps straight past Matt Adams, and we know he's got a brilliant sidestep, and he demonstrated it to perfection there, Rod Silva. Tremendous support by, play by him as well. He's only 24 metres out now. Freeman shovels it wide and bursting onto it and straight through is Nigel Gaffey. A hole as big as the head's opened up. Well, I hope the insurance policy has paid up. Oh, ouch. Looks like he could have thrown his shoulder. Tremendous defence, great attack. Fiddler, Boyd. Good ball. Out goes to McNamara. And he's got to draw them in. Comes down to Vincent and he goes for the line and he's there. Fiddler calling his defence to get across towards the centre a bit more. Now it's Colin Ward out of a tackle. Shane Walker for the line. Long ball over the top and Pablo crosses the line. And a big hole on the edge of the scrum there and straight through it goes Keo. Gordon can't get to him. Steve Carter gives chase. Jason Keo races away. To score a simple try. Now they're eight metres away from the line, the doggies. Jimmy can pay out wide. Now Dimmick, now it's a pay, pay. He scores. Lamb, Sadara's out wide. Takes it wider for Connolly. Rubber kick by Connolly. He may score. He will. out from the line. Acting half Sedaris, first receiver Polo Mount out, now Darren Smith. Again they're nine out, stands in the tackle, Goodman away, Dimmick with the ball, they score! They put it down! Totally! Twice they played last year, twice Souths inflicted big defeats, now they go for the try, Darren Smith gets it. George Artis unloads it to Leeds. Leeds going to be pulled down a metre or two out. He tried to roll over there too from the play of the ball. Back it comes to Taylor. It's a matter of numbers going on here, and it does. From the play of the ball. Back it comes to Walters. Walters cuts him up the centre. He's looking for support. He'll find it outside, and Chris Johns can he go all the way. You bet he can, and Johns is over underneath the post. So Walters, Chris Johns. John's back into the forward, still going as John's. Oh. And if he gets it, it's a try. Because there's about two and a half minutes to go. Gilmeister unloads it to Peter Wright. He gets it to Kevy Walters. And Walters is over underneath the post. Close to half time, through the hands of the hard. Then to Devereaux. Devereaux in some space. Defence coming across. Chance for Manly, Lions running across the park, letting decoys go inside, eventually Elsgood gets out of the tackle, he'll score! A huge defensive strain, or drain, has started to take its toll. Stewart, Daly, Meninga, Belcher, Nadruka inside, puts his foot flat on the floor! support Meninga's coming up the big fella not required as Clyde goes to ground five meters out from the line Walters is the dummy half Stewart's the receiver the long pass pinpoint accuracy to Daly short off the right hip away for Ferner off the ground not tackled it goes to Mullins Mullins is there flip passes back for Daly to kick ahead and score yes try time Daly puts his mark on this sensational game and
normally Mal, if he thinks he's done something wrong, he'll, he'll go to the aid of the player. Ooh, yeah. Yes, well, you might hear more of that. Devereaux is coming off the field and he's been clutching a jaw. I love, I love scoring tries for the Raiders. That's why I do that. I used to do the full walks and everything like that when I, I'm still on the kids. Congratulations, Noah. That's actually about 10,000 Fijian dollars to be able to spend that well back home. Yeah, nevertheless, it's not a bad little play. They've kept things very nice and tidy, Cronulla, up the short sides. And now it's Roy. Away he goes, chased by Robbie Kearns. Good speed from the youngster. Down to Wrigley. Back inside to Wishart. It's try time here for the Steelers. Eddinghausen can't get to him. Gives chase and improves the position. And that's a sensational try. Illawarra cutting back in behind the play, the ball. John Simon flicks it back to Cross. Again, the skills continue. John Cross bursts away. John Simon inside, pulls it in, a race for the line, and Simon scores the try. That's 10 metres anyway. Yeah. You know, I don't think it's going to make a great deal of difference. Maybe a little. It's a nice oh. Beautiful hands out to Wishart. He comes to the fullback, kicks ahead. Here's a race. Back goes Wrigley. Wishart showing good speed. Toes it ahead. Diamond's there. Makes the tackle, but Wishart is up and over. Ritson did well to start it. Now Coleman sends a poor pass again out to Eddinghausen. Quinn. Long ball. Stain straightening it up. Pass intercepted by Britton. He's away. They won't catch him, I don't think. Over the halfway he goes. Jonathan Britton chased hard by Darren Higgins, but with a 10-metre start, he puts the nail in the coffin. He's well contained by the Balmain defence, and the Gold Coast slip away. Now this is Dale Shearer backing up a nice half break, and Shearer will score despite Elias' attention. Balmain lived to fight on. They look for a try here that could wrap the match up. This is Guy going down the blind side. Bassari puts it on the toe, and Lions has scored, I think. Lions has scored a try that will wrap the match up with Balmain and give them two wins in a row. Halligan. Can he kick it? Looks OK. Oh, straight between the big sticks. From uh, Wilson, it's with Fennec. Fennec running headlong into the defence. They don't even need to work for field goal here. Just roll it into the in goal area. They've gone for the one-pointer. This might have to wrap it up as Halligan kicked it. Yes, he has. The arm goes up. One account gives you a card to access your cash. <laughs> Early in the morning. Late at night. <laughs> in the country. <laughs> and all around Australia. An account that folds all that into one. Which account? Australia's leading account. When you talk about tough athletic players, one player that comes to mind, apart from me, and is, me. <laughs> is Manly's dashing Desi Hasler. Yeah, I've come up against Desi a few times and I can certainly vouch for his, his ability as a player. And uh, he's one of these guys that never, ever stops trying, mate. Mm. Yeah, well, Des is in his 10th season at Manly this year, and the club's putting on a testimonial year for him, which is great. Yeah, and we're going to pay tribute to Desi Hasler shortly, and uh, it's more like a roasting, really, from Fatty Fulton. Thick or thin, Fatty? Get back to you shortly. <laughs> on the 3rd of April, 1984, in a column by a well-known league personality, it says, Manly has not had a Billy Smith-type halfback since Johnny Mays in the 1973 Premiership winning side. Exciting little Des Hasler may be set to adopt that role after his outstanding all-round game against Balmain. Hasler is an electrifying halfback with the ball in his hands, a devastating runner over a short distance, but it was his defence against Balmain that reminded me immediately of Billy Smith, Australia's greatest half. The author, the manly coach Bob Fulton, back in 1984, ladies and gentlemen. But when he came out from Penrith, I mean, not much happens in Penrith, and I decided that he was only young, I thought, I'd better look after him. I'll take him under my wing, you know, and look after him. So we went for a drink one night at Manly Lee's Club. And I was talking away to Des, saying, oh, what are you doing? He said, I'm a school teacher and blah, blah, blah. I said, you got a girlfriend? He says, oh, no, I'm not having much luck, you know. I said, no luck, eh, hey, Des? He said, but he said, see the blonde Sheila behind the bar? He said, you know, wouldn't mind cracking onto her. <laughs> I said, oh, Des, I said, no chance there, mate. I said, uh, he said, oh, why not? Is she married? I said, no. Boyfriend? I said, no. I said, Des, she's a lesbian. He went, oh, oh. He said, Fatty, what's a lesbian? I said, oh. I said, Jesus, Penrith must be boring. 
So, anyway, I said, look, how am I going to get around this and describe things to him, you know? So I said, well, now see Jenny behind the bar? He said, yeah. Now see um, Shirley over the, over the back there, the other barmate? Good sort? He said, yeah. He said, well, Jenny would like to take Shirley home and make love to her for hours and hours and hours and do all sorts of things to her. I looked at Des and he's crying. I said, mate, what's up? He said, I think I'm a lesbian too. <laughs> Years ago, he, he came to me. He used to, Des has driven some of the worst looking cars I've ever seen in my life. And he came to me, he said, look, Fatty, I want to sell my car. I said, yeah, good as gold. I said, where is it? He said, it's over there. And it's a 1968 Peugeot, you know, I mean, no one drives them anymore. <laughs> so I said, all right. I said, well, he said, look, it's pretty old. I said, how many cases has it done? He said, 114,000 kilometres. I said, oh. I said, well, you've got one choice, Des. You can either, you'll have to get one of your mates to wind the clock back. I said, no doubt, you'll sell it if you do that. So he came to me a week later, same car. I said, Des, what, aren't you selling your car now? He said, no, why should I? It's only done 14,000 kilometres. <laughs> I remember actually one day we, uh, we were playing West and West had just gone from being, uh, they'd moved to Campbelltown and it wasn't called Campbelltown Stadium. They just changed it from something to Arana Park out there, right? And we had a pretty, a big game against West and it's 1988 and uh, it's about 10 to 3 and still no sign of Des, you know. We're all dressed ready to go. And all of a sudden, Des, he walked in. He said, yo, Kit, where you been? He said, oh, I've been to Oran Park, which is like a car racing. <laughs> which wasn't far away, but it was about the 30th lap before he decided there was no footing. <laughs> you know, the amount of work he does for training and his, what do you call it, uh, his determination and uh, training and, and and match game is, you know, it's unbelievable. You know, I've been very, you know, very privileged and very, very honoured. Um, and I think rugby league has given me so many opportunities uh, and the people that I've met, the places that league has taken me to, um, you know, all the good things, all the bad things happen, you know, you all grow from that. And uh, I think the, and the experiences you gain from that, uh, a lot of cherished memories and, as I said, something that, uh, that it'll be a keepsake for, for a long, long time to come. There are a lot of colourful claims being made by light beers these days. So what's so special about Foster's special? And we're away. Straight down to uh, the winger Gary Mercer. Runs into trouble though with Dowling and Tunks. Simmons getting a pass away to Tunks. And the late tackle and there's some heavy work going in on Tunks. Punch is being thrown by Taylor. Here it comes, it's on. Well, Taylor came rushing in late on Tunks then. Immediately the Australian forwards responded to his call for help. Boise Simmons with a special of his. He makes four or five metres into the black and white territory. Comes out to Lewis, he reverses it back into uh, the other side of the Australian lineup, and there's a good run from Australia as they handball it round now. Look at Lewis looking around for support here. Sterling! Sterling for Australia, and he's in! Well, this was a real try. Sterling gets two handlings of the play, and so does Wally Lewis. Very seldom you see that happen. He just kept that alive. There's Sterling on the backer. The Australians lead six points to nil. Now, here comes Taylor, turning his back to the fence, getting it away to Clayton Friend. It's gone back for the uh, second row forward, Sam Stewart. Stewart trying to hurdle over everybody, still going, Stewart! Got a pass back inside, and it's to Taylor, and Taylor's going to score! Well, the Australian defence here, I think they're all staring at their big toe, because there's very little reaction. Hey, you get him, not me. He just kept up marching up centre field, and he's got a receiver outside him. He walked one. Taylor. Friend. Cooper. McGann. Into Bell. Bell's to the quarter line, to the halfway mark, I should say. Looking for support. Coming on the pace now, Bell. The pass is back from Mercer. Mercer stepping. Mercer's going to score. The Kiwis are in again. Well, the start of this play, Australia's defence out wide was very skinny. Now, in you see number six. He went for the intercept and missed out. And they, were, they just got the, had that extra play on them. Extra man. Now friend. Linking up again with Cooper. Cooper's got support to it. Dean Bell. But the pass was forward. 
as Williams joins in the back line. He gets it back to Bell. Bell trying to unload. He loses the ball. Gary Jack's got it for Australia. Gary Jack runs it out. He's taken down hard now. Cooper was the tackler, but the penalty's gone to New Zealand. Well, Jack, explain this one to me. It looked like he was talking about somebody back chatting. Look at Tunks, he's not happy. Well, he's really done the biscuit here. Oh, he's not happy at all. But if they will warn the Australians that this fellow will not have anybody talk to him on a field. Let's see if they'll run it just before half time. Up they go this time. It's Cooper. Cooper with a good pass. He gets it on to Hero. Hero puts it into gear. Oh, they just get him. And he's only 10 metres out of the Kiwis running away. Can they get him before half time? There's the chip kick for a drop goal. Sterling will feed for Australia. Then we'll go with the feed. It's now with Lewis. The run around with Sterling. A little flick pass. Miles. Miles puts a long ball out there for Shearer. Shearer steps. Shearer for the line. Shearer is caught. Is he there? What's him rolling? He's rolling. Well, he's rolled a double movement. There'll be some bruised egos in the straight in rugby league as the count goes down. It's all over. The Kiwis have won this test. And this crowd is a rumpus. And in all fairness, they're showing plenty of respect for the Kiwis too. Apparently, sir, we've arrived at the coaching segment. So does that mean we've got to go out in the backyard and run a few drills for the kiddies? I don't think so, mate. I think we'll leave that up to Jason Taylor. The biggest thing with goal kicking is the fact that everybody kicks differently. OK, some, some blokes kick the conventional Mick Cronin style of kick, and you've got the other majority of the players nowadays, I suppose, who are kicking around the corner. But even the ones who all kick around the corner, they all do things differently. And the thing with goal kicking is you've got to do enough practice to work out what works for you and to get it right so that you're doing the same kick every time. That's the important thing. Not to be placing the ball and going back and saying, gee, I hope this one's going to go over. You've got to be able to place the ball, walk back to the end of your run and know that the things you're going to do are going to make the ball go between the post. I like to give myself plenty of area underneath here, which is where I want to strike the ball. So I don't sit the ball like that on front of the sand. I sit it pretty much on top, maybe a little bit at the back. So I can hit that spot under there with my foot nice and cleanly. When we walk back from the, from the ball, we need to make sure that we've got the ball lined up exactly where we want to kick it. Okay? Then it's just a matter of concentrating on where you're going to kick the ball and the timing of hitting the ball sweetly. If you don't strike the ball sweetly, you're going to find that, you, that the ball won't go as far as you need it to and it'll probably wobble all over the place. If you hit the ball sweetly, you'll find it goes nice and straight and, and as far as you can possibly kick it. I like to come around here and then go back a little bit further. When I get to here, all I think about is keeping my eye on the ball, hitting the ball sweetly and keeping my head over the top of the ball. Gulfcourt, Brittle, face ball, Blake, Bradley, now Donnelly, Donnelly scores! There's the first try of the match! Gulfcourt, the long floating pass to Mackay, fends away from Gillespie, taken by Langmack. They're dropping off plenty of tackles, Western Suburbs, Gula! A little bit short out this way, St George. Langmack getting involved, the run around. Good oh, ball. great pass! Terry Hill! Now McGarry! Western Suburbs! They've carved them up! Goldthorpe. Mackay runs the decoy. Goldthorpe away for Hardy. Millie intercepted. That'll give them six more. Tellus! Tellus gets a pass away! And St George, they score the try! Last tackle coming up. Will they run it, or will they put it up in the air? There's the answer. Crossfield for Willie Khan. It's a bit of both in a way. Khan challenges. He's got it. Willie Khan's got it, and he scored the try. Now it's the last tackle. What are the tactics this time? Does it go to Langer? No, on the blind side. Kevin Walters fires it out to Renoff. He's straight through. Oh, he's just got speed to burn, Steve Renoff. Kevin Walters. Johns. Keeping the ball alive. Plenty of passing. 
O'Dwyer kicking on the last. He regathers his oh, game. Freeman back inside to Silver. He bursts away. Rod Silver trying to go on the in front. He gives the pass to Brendan Hall. And Hall races away for the try. Oh, the Roosters. Brisbane short on the far side. Back it comes this way. Gaffey, Freeman, Polaro for the line. Across comes the tackle. It can't be made. And Polaro scores. Puts it up. Should have run it, I thought. Handball back. It's still play on. Keo. And it's still the last. So they have another go with the kick. Chasing through is Orford. He was offside. Oh, no. Referee has called him back. But it was a long kick across field. So Jeff Orford really had plenty of time to come for it. Well, let's have a look. There's the kick. It's going to go away on the 20-metre line. Oh, Orford right. was onside. Way onside. Jeff it's, Orford it's was onside. But Conley unable to unload. But Canterbury on the attack. They're looking good now. Mitch Newton, Terry Lamb. He's got players all over the park around him. He doesn't need them. Unthinkable at this time last year, even late in the season, that Matthew Rodwell would not be able to make the top grade. Robert Roth makes a half break. Able to stand. Promotes the ball for Gary Conley. And the English winner puts it over the line. Might have been a touch of knock on there, but now... Takes it away on the blind side before promoting it back into the centre of the park and Goodwin gets a chance, he pass away. Paul Amanda, he crawled about five metres, totally leaps up, trouble for Newcastle. Oh, trouble, it's double trouble. And Andy Pembore goes in to score right on the full time. A little bit over-exuberant there, Gaia, as Roberts sends it away. TV on the wraparound, gets it back. Back on the inside, it comes away. Kosef, on it goes to Hasler. Hasler over the quarter line. Hasler dashes away, and Desi's in. The Tigers, can they get back into the game? They've started the second half in fine fashion. This is Geyer, the half dummy, accepted by a couple. Beautiful ball from Bazari. He got it away through Brown to Surinan. Now Surinan up to the halfway, the big dummy. Paul Surinan making big inroads into the Manly defence. Offloads it to Edwards. Edwards holds the pass up. It comes to Lyons. Two bites of the cherry, but he's got it. Only 10 metres out from Manly's line. Balmain desperate for a six-pointer here. Brasher. Away it comes to Guy. A prop, a dummy. Back to Brasher. Edwards will score. Guyer again. Oh, lovely pass to Surinan in space. Back on the inside. Matt Munro. Canberra running right in this first half. Lomax, a one-handed pass, beautifully picked up by Mullins. Mullins in space. He's down to the quarter line. Mullins, they're giving chase, but they won't catch this Greyhound. The galloping Greyhound's in. Stewart. Daly. Away it goes to Mullins again. Mullins in a huge hole. He's got men. Drugo in support. They won't catch the Fijian. And away he comes for the second of the afternoon. Souths. They've been much more competitive in this second half. Patterson. Lovely one-handed pass away from Mabon. Hermanson back on the inside. Trindle the little chip and chase. This will be interesting. Daryl Trindle's got a heap of toe. Litmeyer's come from nowhere to score. Illawarra again. This is Johnny Cross. Linda. Beautiful hands away to David Walsh. Oh, lovely skills. And again, Rodwell in a heap of space. Down towards the quarter. Back it comes to Walsh. One-handed pass from Simon. Oh, he stands them all up and scores a duty. Parramatta. Paul Dutton going without it. Butner. Butner. A little grubber kick into open space. Down towards the goal line. David Riolo goes back for it. David Riolo, away from Marne, away from Gutner. He's got a lot of open space in front of him. He's down towards the halfway line. He's got McIndoe in support, and McIndoe, they won't catch the flying left winger, and McIndoe scores a super try. Illawarra again, John Simon, Russell, Pimcinelli, lovely ball to McGregor. Oh, how easy. That's Twist, sending it outside to Sattler. Sattler out of a couple of tackles, he's on his way, he's up over the 20 metre mark. Going for the line himself, he'll score, yes he does. Scott Sattler in for the try and the Gold Coast hit back. It is the final tackle, so here's Alexander, running it out this time, turns it back inside, Butler, Hitler, took the round of a couple of tackles, he's over underneath the post. This is Fitler. 
Fittler charging his way through, stepped out of a couple, still going as Brad Fittler. Coming up to Shearer, got his pass back now, and it's going to be McNamara. He's a class act, Brad Fittler. North Sydney, they've been woeful so far tonight. This isn't the side that beats St George, and Cronulla are playing football like the side, certainly not like the side that were thrashed by Illawarra. Wrigley back on the inside, Higgins, and Higgins is going to dash away and score an easy try. North through Fairley, the big long striding fellow, down towards the corner line, back on the inside, Caruana, but it's all too late for the So man. North Sydney's loss is to the benefit of both Canterbury and St George as they take a collective leapfrog over the Bears into the competition's joint leadership. If you took a cheque account that pays daily interest and combined it with a savings account and then added a card account, you'd have our new account. An account that folds all your accounts into one. Which account? Australia's leading account. All right, now what's something that both you and I have got in common? I don't know, really. What do we do? Keep pet rocks or something? <laughs> Be serious. So oh, sorry. We both play test football. Yeah. But we're yet to do the victory lap on grand final day. Oh, don't remind me about the two grand final losses, mate. I've told mm. you that before. Mm, it's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> but what means more to you, mate? I mean, are playing for your country or, or winning a premiership, assuming that you haven't done either? Yeah, it's, it's a hard question. It's a question that gets asked of a lot of people. But mm. I think on a personal goal um, would be playing for your country. And to do a victory lap on grand final day would be great, but mm. it's a team goal. And uh, I've, luckily, I've done one in New Zealand, and that was a great feeling about playing for your country. I think, don't think anyone could take that away from you. That's right, mate, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it probably comes down to a personal choice, doesn't yeah. it, really, I guess, you know. I mean, I'd, I do love to win a premiership when we were that so, so close in 89, mate. But Three minutes to go or something. It happens, mate, doesn't it? That's <laughs> right, you know, but I mean, I've, I've played for Australia now, so no one can take that away from you, nah, either, I guess. Nah. So. I've got your jersey. Look at it upstairs. Oh, lucky boy. Oh, obviously winning the, winning the Premiership. Um, I've played for Australia, fortunately. Uh, but although it wasn't a test match, it was a, an international game. We toured New Zealand. But uh, we, we tasted a bit of success with Cronulla in, in 88 and 89. We, we made the semi-finals and uh, 88 we won the minor Premiership and just missed out on, on playing in the grand final. And, and that to me would be the ultimate, winning, winning the Premiership. They're two different highs, and uh, you know I hold them both, you know, and they're two, you know, two separate enough identities, I think. Anyway, it's been great playing for Manly, winning a grand final, as it has been, you know, representing your country in that. Uh, you know, but the one thing, you know, that um, you know that I've always strived for that is, uh, you know, each time I, uh, you know, step on the field, that um, you know I've come away, I've tried to come away knowing that I've done my best you know, in that 80 minutes of football. I don't know. Uh, they're both uh, great achievements, you know. Um, obviously, you know, you play, you're playing the same guys week in and when you win a premiership together, it's a great, it's a great satisfaction. But um, also, you know, to be able to have the opportunity to represent your country is also a great achievement too. So, uh, you know, it, it's um, there's not not a struck match between the two, and I, I really can't sort of name one or the other. I think uh, you know, if you get the opportunity to do either, and uh, you know, and be successful at it, um, you know, it, it's a great feeling to do. Winning a premiership, uh, you have to be uh, in the right place at the right time with the right team to get through to, to a position where you can uh, can win it. Um, so there's, uh, you know, there's a, a little bit of luck involved in that. But um, playing for Australia personally uh, has just been the greatest honour that I could think of. Well, mate, for any young aspiring, you know, first grade player who's uh, up and coming, I think. Uh, at a time when you're very young, uh, you know, your ambition should be to, to represent your country. And uh, from my personal point of view, that was always my ambition, was to uh, represent Australia. And, you know, obviously uh, yeah, the next step is to, to win a premiership because, uh, you know, the, the, um, the achievement of playing for Australia is a, a personal goal. There are all sorts of claims being made about light beers these days. So what's so special about Foster's special? One thing we haven't done is the top 10 try countdown. Well, let's finish it off, Wiz, because I've still got these goggles, mate. Oh, no. <laughs>
Yeah, nevertheless, it's not a bad little play. They've kept things very nice and tidy, Cronulla, up the short sides. And now it's Roy. Away he goes, chased by Robbie Kearns. Good speed from the youngster. Down to Wrigley. Back inside to Wishart. It's try time here for the Steelers. Eddinghausen can't get to him. Gives chase and improves the position. And that's a sensational try. Last tackle coming up. Will they run it or will they put it up in the air? There's the answer. Crossfield for Willie Kahn. It's a bit of both in a way. Kahn challenges. He's got it. Willie Kahn's got it. And he scored the try. That's 10 metres anyway. Yeah. You know, I don't think it's going to make a great deal of difference. Maybe a little. It's a nice... Oh. Beautiful hands. Out to Wishart. He comes to the fullback. Kicks ahead. Here's a race. Back goes Wrigley. Wishart showing good speed. Toes it ahead. Diamond's there. Makes the tackle. But Wishart is up huge defensive strain or drain has started to take its toll. Stewart, Daly, Meninga, Belcher, Nadruka inside, puts his foot flat on the floor, gets inside, Hancock, they're not going to catch the flying feet then. Noah Nadruka. Illawarra again, this is Johnny Cross, Linda, beautiful hands away to David Walsh, oh lovely skills, and again Rodwell in a heap of space, down towards the quarter, back it comes to Walsh, one-handed pass from Simon, oh he stands the ball up and scores a 50. Well this doesn't look like you'll be taking that swim back across the Tasman does it? Nah mate, but I tell you what, I'm going to sit here and annoy big fat slow forwards like yourself, who get upset fat. with sidestepping cheeky little halfbacks mate. Well, look, before you start getting too cocky, mate, we're yeah. going to finish the show with highlights of the third test. That'll, oh. that'll shut you up. <laughs> Not for long. OK, big fella, start rolling. Freeman trying to milk it for a bit of a penalty. He cops three defenders. Serenin coming in from behind. Now the penalty will come. And Freeman wants to go on with it with an old Tiger teammate. They used to play together at Balmain, Sirenin and Freeman, he chased him down the field, had plenty to say. There was no options for him. Last tackle. Langer. Michael Hancock. Kicking. Hancock in behind the line. Nobody home! They can argue all they like, but they were not aware of the fact that he got in behind the line and was onside. Certainly caught New Zealand napping. Yeah, this is his this is his fourth try in this test series, and it's uh, it's usually over to Willie Kahn, but they've they've switched wings. No time for the chasers. Shearer, Shearer gallops into wound. Hancock inside. He doesn't use him. New Zealand are turned around. They are paying the penalty for a poor kick. Why to Daly to Meninga? Great run, Dale Shearer. A great passage of play there from Australia. Langer. Dummies inside, outside as Sirenin. Gets rid of one. Taken by Freeman. New Zealand in trouble. Oh. Now Freeman and Steve Walters exchange blows. He put one on Sirenin's chin while he was down. Langer to Harrigan. Loses it. Some scrappy play now. I don't know why McCracken didn't grab it. This is the domain that normally belongs to Langer and Daly. Inside the 20. Now they go to their big back line. Meninga flying onto it. Inside, Fiddler under the post. Brilliantly worked. Lang Park comes alive as Australia grabs their second. Langer moves the ball nice and quickly. Laurie Daly heads for the corner post, gets an inside runner there to hold him up, and uh, and then Big Mal comes. He's an awesome sight, and uh, you, cer you know he certainly takes some stopping. There's the inside man. Fitler. Fitler with a big play. Eddinghausen, his first touch. Eddinghausen on Watson. Great tackle. Great play, Brad Fitler. Fittler has been important a number of times when the Australians have been under pressure. Punishing defence this time from Gavin Hill. Roberts took the full brunt of that one. Langer is extra wide. Great ball out from Steve Walters. Daly. 
Again, Meninga on the inside. He steps clear. Meninga brings the house down. Yeah, the width in the pass here. 30 metre pass, 30 metre pass right across the field. Daly gets on the outside again. Slips a nice ball inside to Mal. The inside people aren't pushing or tackling good enough. And you just can't stop Mal from five yards out. Rapati. Lomax. Meninga over the top to Khan. Khan still going hit by McCracken. Massive tackle. Langer. Is there a try left for Australia? Again, they kick. Hancock looking for a double. Watson's there in time. There'll be no restart. Seconds only remain. Time is gone and Australia grab a strong scoreline in this third and final test. They grabbed all the tries, but it was tough and still pretty tight for most of the second 40. To our fellas, you know, uh, we stuck together pretty thick during the whole time we've been together. And one of our motivation tonight was that uh, we're all friends, we all camp together, we're one big family, and we knew we, we couldn't uh, let ourselves and our supporters down. And last but last, not least, the, least, the uh, Kiwis, we knew you were going to keep on fighting. You showed in every test match that we played this year that you are a great side. In national series as well and alive. We did fight on very well. We showed a lot of character. Showed a lot of character in this side, and uh, all I can say is that to the Australian side, very, very hard to beat, and they are world champions. And uh, I just like to say to my fellas, you did put up a great fight, and uh, we're just a little bit unlucky that the bounce of the ball didn't go our way tonight. Thanks very much.